What's going on guys? So today, I'm actually really excited. I uh, finally got the last piece I was waiting for to rebuild my firewall router uh, UTM, Universal Threat Management Device. I I'm, I've been waiting for the motherboard. I got the processor and the RAM and everything a couple days ago and I've just been sitting here waiting. Uh, it was originally supposed to be delivered tomorrow, got it today. So we're gonna to get to building this. Now this is gonna be less about building a computer. Plenty of videos about that. What this is gonna do, what this video is gonna be mostly about is uh, if your Untangle, this, now I'm going with Untangle here, but if your Untangle machine dies like mine did, if you're paying for it, how you can restore it, and if you weren't paying for it but using a manual backup, the, the restore is very similar, but just uh, some minor, minor differences. We'll go over that. But for right now, we'll get to piecing this together. I'm going to explain the parts, or why I got them, for what reasons. So, well, that's the cooler. For the processor, I got a uh, AMD Ryzen 5 1600 AF. So it's basically the 2600 model version. Just relabeled as the AF version. Uh, box cooler actually will fit just fine I mean, it's gonna be close though an Intel you need two NICs for this kind of thing at least but uh, I got an Intel NIC that had the short riser card I already put that on uh, see here 8 gigs Patriot dual sticks Patriot memory DDR4 2666 I wasn't looking for anything too fast it's a router I'm not looking to game on it and <laughs> get this out of the package here we go a SK Hynix NVMe 256 gig uh, M.2 drive so SSD so it'll be nice and handy uh, part of the reason I got this was just to reduce cable clutter in here so put it back in there until I need it now because the 1600 does not come with any onboard graphics and the motherboard I got does not come with any onboard graphics I did look but what I'd end up paying would actually be more than buying the motherboard and a separate graphics card. So for the graphics card, something very simple, something that Untangle works fine with is NVIDIA GeForce GT710. That's oh, I mean, we're talking one gig of DDR3. One gig and GDDR3. Not even, not even GDR, just DDR3. So, a bit old school, but it'll work. Uh, I'd already done an experiment with a was it the Ryzen 2400 G uh, four core eight thread with the Vega graphics built in? It would go through BIOS, do the initial startup for the Grub launcher for Untangle. But once it got into the installer of Untangle, whether I chose graphics or text install, it just would, would bomb out. Like it just did not like the onboard graphics for AMD. So. And honestly, for what I paid for the 1600 AF, I mean, yeah, even spending, I think, 30 bucks on this is what I spent, I still came out to less than what a 2400G was, so I'm okay with that. That's six core, six thread. I'm okay with this. It's not that bad. For the motherboard, we got the ASRock. Uh, what did I get here? I'm going to have to look here. It's a B450 board. I've got the... They, all the shipping stickers are covering it up now. Ah, well, there we go. The B450 HDV so, by Azrak. Uh, small board. It was a little disconcerting then that this is how it was delivered as the motherboard box. It was not in a box in itself with packaging or foam or anything. So let's check it for any damage here. So we're good there. We got the IO shield. Static cable we won't need that, but. Extras are always good. Uh, manual with CD. Why do you guys still have CDs with these things? Uh, either give me a USB drive that has literally nothing but the network drivers installed, or network drivers on the USB drive, or just have everything on the USB drive because you can go online and get the drivers. It's easy. Don't don't waste the plastic. Yeah, you know, don't waste the optical stuff. Right, let's see if this. Oink. So 
ridiculous it looks. So far, so good. I was actually a little concerned about the stock Ryzen cooler that came with the 1600 AF. Um, I was kind of concerned it might be a little tall, but uh, now that I've got the, the box and everything, I actually opened it up initially, it's fine. It'll fit. Um, I actually won't need this. This is the drive cage for this server case. Now, this is a 2U. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. I think this is an iStar case. I'll put the link in the description once I remember what it is. I'll have to look it up. I think it was the iStar. I don't remember the exact model. But the power supply is up front with a pass-through cable all the way to it. Uh, this one came with it, but it'll handle a full, well, semi-full ATX uh, power supply. It'll handle the size of an ATX power supply, but you are going to have to be a bit cautious as to how long your power supply is because otherwise it may not fit. Uh, but I believe this one was 400 watts. They're more than plenty for what we're doing. And this thing's not going to be at 100% anywhere close to any amount of time. So everything looks good though. So uh, we'll start putting this thing together and then we'll get to the install process. Because what you have to do to restore Untangle is you have to install it and then do a full restore of everything. And the nice thing about the way Untangle does it now compared to what it used to be. It used to be that you had to back up the system and then you had to back up each individual application you had. So if you had firewall, if you had OpenVPN, if you had everything, the antivirus, the intrusion prevention, you had to go into each specific module, back up that module, and then it re restore them separately. Now you just run the backup and it restores everything. So it, it restores all the modules you had installed and all their settings so big plus on that I don't know I cannot remember what version they went with on that uh, current version is 15 I want to say that came out in 12 I've actually been using untangle since 6 I've had some people mention to me that I should probably start going looking at PF sense it's a little more configurable but as terms for plug-and-play I like untangle I will still look at PFSense, see if it's something to migrate to, but for right now, Untangle works really well, so I'm going to stick with it. Okay, so we have our Untangle machine uh, rebuilt, got up to the dashboard now, and I, I love how this dashboard looks, uh, it's very informative, and you can add a whole bunch of wid other widgets and things like that, customize things, it's really cool. So if you're paying for the configuration backup, because what we're looking for is to restore from a catastrophic hardware failure. If you're storing from, uh, if you're paying for this, excuse me, and you're restoring that backup, you want to go to the Untangled Command Center, which and this is the base of it. Go into your appliances, choose the appliance you want to restore. And under cloud backups, you'll have it right here. Now, you can select the backup you want and restore backup from here. And it's going to give you the warning. The appliance will be temporarily unavailable. So I'm going to choose no for this. The other option, if you're paying for this as well, is you can download the zip file, the tarball. Excuse me, it's a tarball. I've already done this. And you can go back to here under your config system and restore restore all settings or you can restore all except keep your current network settings now this is really handy if you had a catastrophic failure and your hardware is technically different so different NICs for your external and internal you just choose that one that way this also works if you went from a router setup to now an invisible bridge so you have router the untangled device and then you're switched it's a invisible bridge setup mine's the router so you can do it either way and you would choose restore from file and <laughs> I don't know why it defaulted to that and 
you would choose the file. Now, if I do this, it's going to restore it and it will be unusable for a moment. But nonetheless, this is how you do it. It's a very small file. Your other option, if you decide not to pay for the uh, home version, which is what I'm paying for, if you decide not to, your backups will be under here, under system, backup, and you backup to file. And this essentially kind of turns it to sort of the same thing. I'll put it under here. Now this gives you the raw dot backup file, which is fine. But the procedure is still the same. We go to restore, restore from file. Where's my D drive? There it is. D. And I would choose the backup file. Now the backup has to restore from either a dot backup file or a gzip archive. So those are your options. That's just how Untangle works. But either one of those will restore it complete to what it was. And I actually did this not too long ago, uh, just because. And I restored it from a backup I had from this morning. Now, one of the nice options and one of the benefits of use of paying for Untangle is under the configuration backup, you have a Google connector. This allows it to connect to your Google Drive as long as you set up in the directory connector, which is where you have to do this, under Google. It stores in your drive, in your Google Drive. Now you'll have to maintain that and go in and, and delete it on your own, delete anything that you don't want on your own. But the nice thing is, Untangle only keeps their backups for a certain amount of time. If, if that's just automatic. But if you also have it backing up to your Google Cloud Drive, they'll sit there until you need them again. Because not being an enterprise, sometimes it could take a little while. I had to use a small um, Netgear? Netgear router. Just a basic router. It was killing me. But I had to use a small basic Netgear router for a while until I had the money to replace this. Which, those cloud backups would have been gone by then. They only keep them, I want to say, for 30 days, maybe less. I've not been able to confirm that one way or the other, but they don't keep them forever. And the backups are automatic nightly. So you actually don't get to choose that. There's there's no option here. To, it's just cloud backup, and they're backed up nightly. Now, like I said, if you're not paying for it, you don't feel like paying for it, that's fine. The free version of Tangle works well. You're just going to have to make sure that if you make any changes, you go into system, you go into backup, and you back up it again. Every time you make a change, back up in case something like this happens. You don't want to have to back up and it's been six months, you've done all these changes, and your hardware fails, and all of a sudden you need to restore it, and you have no idea what all those changes were now. Every time you make a change, back up. I cannot recommend that now. But that's how you store your Untangle box. Uh, like I said, very straightforward. I have not customized my dashboard back to the way I really like it yet. Um, this is just a base thing. I decided to set it back to default. But there's a lot you can add through here. And if you'd like, we can go over that at another time for the various widgets. You can add custom widgets. That's under here. It's great. And all of them are based under reports. So, and you usually get a fairly real-time feed they refresh every second or so as long as you're actually active on the screen so uh, that's it guys uh, I'll put links in the description to all the hardware I purchased for this and um, appreciate it guys like subscribe all that neat stuff and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one take it easy